the Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. You understand what I'm saying. We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or black, but by getting the public to associate the hippies and with marijuana and blacks with heroin and then criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest their leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about the drugs? Of course we did. Here comes a new challenger. Shelly Morris wrote, stop protecting these beasts of the field gangs. Black men are monsters. They are the only animals making the communities unsafe. And then yet again, they referenced another individual. Another person wrote, I love how you all gloss over the fact that black women are harmed at an exponential rate by our so-called kings. This is why petitions like this are needed because y'all refuse to hear the cries of black women, yet y'all want us to hear, y'all want us here fighting for y'all. I will never march for black men ever again after seeing the pure hatred and disdain that I saw in the beta sphere. I will never argue with another white person again over y'all. Person wrote, when do black men empathize with black women? Many tell black women it's their fault about the BC. They need to pick better. They cheered when they thought that some black women and their own children were going to be kicked off snap. And when black women get harmed by a white male, they all get giddy about it. When it's by a black man, then it's the normal course of life in the hood and black men are quiet. Yet you don't see many black women celebrating a black man losing his life in the streets, even if it's by a white male. Mad that a black man trying to risk his life to get to his Becky like Ahmaud Aubrey. Please stop. The willful ignorance and deflection. You couldn't even deny what any of these women stated because no lies detected. Where are all of these black men who claim they love black women yet are eerily silent? The more I listen to you, you sound just like those fatherless and angry black men who are mad at their black mothers who did all the work and all black women because their fathers walked out. Yet again, this is when I told people to be very careful and pay attention to the people that decide to agree with you because you just might find out, you know, who they are. This person said, black men are a menace to society. They are the killers, the hard R's and the P's, right? Absent to their children, their pimps, their liars, their thieves and their nuisances to the planet. They have no money and no education and nothing beneficial to add. You free the knee. You free black women signed a black woman or is it? All right. So I guess you can technically consider this a review, right, of the uh, I watched both the first and the second episode. Um, so I might mention a little bit of the second episode in here. But the, the this is what I'm going to start off with. Right. The comments. Right. So I had comments directly under my video. I've seen comments directly under the Discover YouTube channel, which I will play um, a little bit shortly later on in the video so that you can freely look at those and peruse those if you want to. Then you also have the comments on the change.org and then also on Amazon itself. And more than likely, you got comments, you know, in other places that I'm not looking at this moment in time. But all of them basically say the exact same things, right? They say that black men are demonic. Black men are no good. Uh, black men should not be on this planet um, at all. Black men should be, um, you know, going into extinction. Black women uh, should separate and, you know, consider themselves a completely different group from uh, black men. Uh, black men don't protect. Black men are not fathers. Black men are not husbands. Black men are are not providers black men are not supporters black men are not builders um black men are uh, uh not emotionally there. like 
anything that you can potentially list that is a negative word, all you have to do is put black men first and then that word after. That's pretty much that that will summarize every single comment that I have roughly seen. Roughly 99.9% of those comments uh, you know, delve into that whole aspect. Another portion of those comments um dive into ooh, statistics where they state that, you know, black men are just overwhelmingly like all black men in the community are just going out every single day attacking uh, black women, going out every single day, right? And attacking young black girls, going out every single day, uh, committing all of these horrible and atrocious crimes um, every single day. So none of these black men have any type of jobs. They don't have any type of families. They don't have anything else going on in life. Their whole main purpose when they were placed and brought onto this planet was to just solely leave their house every single day and to go perform and commit a lot of these heinous and atrocious acts specifically to black women just because. Yet again, that's summarizing a lot of those comments there. I've had some people basically state that you know, I'm being dismissive, right? When it comes to uh, going over the comments, I'm not being dismissive at all. I'm going through the comments, not going through and responding to every single comment that I happen to see. I've done other videos <laughs> directly for that, but clearly nobody watches those videos. So this is why people don't even understand why it is. I'm not trying to give a response to every single thing that would have made the video way longer. People have very short attention spans. They're not going to sit up there and stay for a video going through comments an hour, two hours, three hours long and, and just sit there and like, listen to me talk. Trust me. I've been through this before. Uh, I literally had two different channels. Uh, I've done this enough times. Right. And my thing is, I'm not being dismissive at all. I never said that things don't happen to black women. I never said that any of these things don't exist. I've also <laughs> called many of these things out. I've done videos directly on them. I've had uh, live streams. I've had conversations within my own videos directing these towards uh, who it, it is specifically about. But like I said before, the problem with a lot of people that just want to talk and they just want to list certain things off, they're not actually hearing and paying attention to, you know, the people out there that are actually trying to bring awareness, that are actually trying to put this to the forefront of different things of that nature. Um, they just want to consider every single living black man out here um, as the enemy, as detrimental, as something that society and the planet doesn't need. And the main thing I've told black women is that black women better be careful about the individuals that they decide to align with or that they decide to allow to speak on their issues, because everybody that is for you is not of you and everybody that looks like you ain't you. So you have a lot of those women that are outside of America speaking on topics dealing with black men and black women and they're siding with black women. Right. And they're having all of those uh, talking points that you're able to hear right directly on a variety of platforms. And they're just pushing those forward. Um, later on, when I deal with the YouTube comments, you you might catch, you know, a Ted who's married to a Sarah who decided to speak on the topic and basically state to black women. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they need to start, you know, marrying their wives. I mean, uh, marrying their their women. They need to start, you know, being fathers. They need to start doing this and start doing that. So you literally have somebody who is not even interested in black women, but magically siding with black women only when it has to deal with coming at black men in a negative type of form or fashion. Right. And the issues that black women are talking about has nothing to do with that Caucasian household and that Caucasian family. So, like I said before, black women emotionally. You guys are being tugged and pulled in a multitude of directions. And you have a lot of people that are enabling, right, a lot of the negative experiences that you guys have had 
and they're forming that into a larger bubble to encompass all black men. So that also, you, like, whenever this is what I'm trying to get a lot of black women to understand. Whenever you decide to state that all black men are this, all black men are that, just remember that one of these days your son is going to become a black man. So even if he's not right, what you're specifically talking about, even if he's not a part of the experiences that you describe or other black women describe or whatever it is, guess what? He still falls within that branding. And this is when I sit up there and try to tell women like, yo, y'all got to be very careful about the things that you happen to state because you're raising sons. So that same branding, that broad brush that you're using, you're not going to be able. You can probably separate that now because your son is a child, but you're not going to be able to separate that when your son is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You're not going to be able to do that. Because the world ain't going to let you do that. Society is going to sit up there and tell you, and guess what? The other women who you side with, they're going to look at your son and say the exact same things that you've been sitting up there saying. So it doesn't matter how good you raised him. It doesn't matter how educated you uh, uh, helped him to be or to become. It doesn't matter how you've uh, taught him the value right, of women and how to respect women. Other black women that don't like black men and that had a, a bad taste in their mouth because of the separate experiences that they've had with specific black men that they selectively decided to lay with and date and marry and have relationships with, they're going to sit up there and pour all of that onto your sons. So like I said before, be very careful of the things that you decide to state because sooner or later, all of that is going to come right back home. Let me just add this in before I forget. So, you know, just as I listed before, they're going over the topics that, you know, lead to uh, certain detriments, conditions and different things like that. Um, dealing with black men and the black community. Right. To at least showcase uh, where things uh, come from, where they stem from. One of the most powerful things that I was able to see was a group of black men that came through with a black bread business. I didn't know anything about this. Like I said, other people in the black community more than likely don't know anything about this because we're here. And this is clearly what we're talking about. Black men versus black women, black women versus black men. Blame, 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 blame. Right. And we're missing out on the greatness of our own people that they're contributing to the community. Then it was on a, a, a video that I touched on before where I had to deal with black men wearing suits and how everybody wanted to, uh, you know, go off on those black men saying that, oh, if black men are going to be in suits and, and this, this, that, then they need to be coming together with a plan for the community and not just for a photo op and da, 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 and all this other type of stuff. The most powerful thing that they did was going into the reasons why they did it, because for one, it had to do with a black business which is called black men's wear which is suits it's a black suit business where it's all black men they make tailor-made suits for other black men so this was another way to sit up there and promote that business because all of these black men bought suits brought because <laughs> i said bought brought suits from this th th this place right and then on top of that they wanted to um one of the uh the the, the makers he stated that he wanted to put a, another image out there of black men, something that, you know, people don't normally see. This is something that he wanted to normalize, which was black men in suits, because all over social media, if you see a black man in hoodie and in blue jean pants, it's like automatically they see him as a gang member. They see him as a criminal, something like that. But if you see a black man in a suit, you can't associate that same perception with the black man in a suit because it's two different images so it messes up that whole thought process so he's there to try to disrupt that and one of the strongest things that i've seen was when they questioned both of his sons because he's a father and one of the sons he said yeah um you know i, I i'm wearing the suit because you know i like suits and i want to be like and i want to dress like my dad Right. That brought like a tear to my eye. His other son, he was like, yeah, you know, um, it's because, you know, I like suits and I like taking pictures of them. 
So it's like, like I said before, a lot of people don't even understand half of the things they're literally saying when they want to already make a prejudgment about what black men are out here doing in suits. They automatically want to deem it as a negative. They automatically want to put so much pressure on them that realistically they wouldn't be able to either deal with or handle, nor could they actually accomplish what it is that they're asking other people to sit up there and do. But like I said, I digress. Let's go to the other portion of the video. All black women, right? So that this can be pushed directly out to the forefront. Because as we all know, the, the main thing that is always stated, um, black women have, you know, a lot of money. Black women are the most college educated. Black women have the utmost degrees, right? So with all of that being said, and with all of that being how it is, why don't all of these women, black women, get together who are powerful? who are highly educated, who have a multitude of degrees, who have, you know, over, you know, uh, six or whatever figure that those black women on top of the ones that are complaining get together and make documentaries, make television shows, uh, formulate movies, write a whole bunch of books, start up a whole bunch of blogs and a variety of things like that. Why is that not happening? You're telling the world that, yo, we are the most disrespected. We are the most um, undervalued. Uh, we are the most copied, right, when it comes to a culture and a grouping and a race um, of women, right? So why not just come together as one and just build something a sense, a sense, a sense undeniable. Why come to an area where you have a documentary that is being made that is specifically going towards a point dealing with black men? And you're like, nah, we don't want that here. What we want to do is we want to take that down and then we want to put black women in its place because that is more important. That is what needs to get talked about that is what needs to get addressed the spotlight needs to be on that a delivery needs to happen so that the whole world and especially black men know and understand what harm a hundred percent they are doing to us and this is the same thing i posed to the black community complain 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 complaining and going to you know different areas and all this other type of stuff why not come together and basically build our own cities, formulate our own schools, hire our, you know, our own teachers, build our own hospitals, build our own businesses, build back up uh, Black Wall Street and a variety of other types of things. But whenever you happen to want to put black people to task, yeah, stuff doesn't really happen. So I've posed this question to black women a multitude of times. And yet. told black women like hey i do value and see you so why not get some self-defense class instead of spending money directly on foolishness that is not going to add any type of value to your life any type of safety to your life any type of protection why not go and take some self-defense classes why not go out there and get some type of weapons training so that you are better prepared so that if any fool wants to walk up on you, bow, 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 bow. That's it. And what happens with that is a whole lot of mouth happens. And it's like, oh, this is what I'm talking about with black men. Uh, Y'all don't really care about uh, uh black women. Um, now it's it's on a hundred percent of you know black women to protect themselves and black men don't even want to protect us. This is why we are the most undervalued and unappreciated and, and not protected. But yet you have a black man telling you, like, yo, I understand how the world basically sees you. Me myself, I'm not Superman. I cannot literally at the drop of a dime fly outside of my house and go save every single black woman out here. 
Neither can any other black man. There's not going to be an 18 wheeler full of black guys just waiting outside of like every black woman's house just in case something happens. That's not how the world works. And that's an unrealistic way to basically uh, try to portray how a man should be like that's ridiculous. So it's like if you know that that is the case, if you know that you are a single mother, a single parent in a single household, right? Why not go out there and make yourself fully capable of being able to defend yourself? So let's say you are waiting on help to get there. It might be, you know, 13 or whatever minutes away. It only takes a couple of seconds for somebody to decide to take a life. So while you're basically, you know, doing your best, bow, 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 or, or whatever it is, you know, you're good. And help is just like the cleanup crew. Like I said, I don't I don't realistically know what is happening out here, but I just know for certain that a lot of good, 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 good. Our young girls, our young girls, our young girls already have the mentality of that, yo, uh, black men are basically everything negative. What do you think that those black girls are going to sit up there and do? They're going to go for everybody else. If they're listening to older black women just solely talk about negative experiences and they're pushing that towards little girls, what do you think that's going to do to those little girls? They're not going to see black men as attractive. They're not going to see young black boys as attractive. They're going to look at everybody else. Why? Because they never heard their mother speak negatively on any other group of men negatively. And the thing that people need to understand is that Everything is coming from a certain perspective and a certain experience that people have. And the moment in time that people take responsibility for the people that they interact with and the people that they exchange energy with and the people that they decided to procreate with, things will get a lot better because you have to acknowledge that there's an issue. You would have to be able to respond and respect the fact that, yeah, there is a problem and chances are that problem is me. And then your last thing is that, yo, I have to sit up there and take responsibility. I have to make acknowledgement, you know, about this and I have to sit up there and fix the issue. And this is what I told people before. It's like, yo, before you get together with another person, before you go out here and start dating and procreating and having unprotected relations, yo, work on yourself, fix yourself. Nobody wants to do that. Everybody wants to always point the finger and blame. Oh, this is your fault. This is your fault. This is your fault. This is your fault. If everybody is pointing the fingers at whoever they want to point it at, who's the one fixing the problem? If you subtract yourself away from that equation, is there still a problem from your perspective? No, (laughs) there's not. But like I said before, a lot of people just don't want to do the work. And when it comes to relationships, um, when it deals in between men and women, nine times out of 10 women out here will just sit up there and say like, Oh, I'm perfect. I'm this, I'm that I was the best thing that ever happened to him. Like magically nothing is ever wrong with the woman in the relationship. The, uh, failure always falls down and comes to by way of the man. So, you know, like I said before, a lot of people, it, people can't be honest about certain situations. They just can't. They, they just cannot. Like I said before, a lot of situations that deal with the community would be a lot better if black people would just hold off and they would just work and fix themselves. But black people don't want to do it. Black people barely even want to sit up there and do therapy. This is why if there was ever an actual meeting where where if, if there was like a big enough room where you could literally have black men in the community and black women in the community. Nothing would ever get solved or fixed because all it would come down to is a whole bunch of finger pointing and a whole bunch of people in their feelings. That's that's literally what it would devolve into. So whatever the topic was, whatever was supposed to get fixed is going to go into you did this or you did that. You're not good for this. You're not good for that. Well, this is my experience and this is my ex- it, 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 It's going to be nothing. Is going to be one giant Mortal Kombat of words, and that's it. And we're going to be right back to square one.
because it's going to be a whole bunch of blaming and it's not going to be anybody listening. And that's clear cut, which you can see directly in the comment section. It's nothing but pointing fingers, nothing but blaming, nothing but talking. And literally nobody wanted to take responsibility uh, for anything that is, you know, transpiring. Like I said, I've done a multitude of videos detailing to the black community. It's like, yo, we need to sit up there and fix this. We need to do this. We need. And I have black people like, yo, this don't have nothing to do with me. I'm an individual. This ain't this ain't me. I ain't sit up there and do it. So I ain't sitting up. Like I said, when you got one that has that mentality, there are thousands, there are hundreds, there are thousands and hundreds of thousands, if not potentially millions that have that exact same mentality. Why should I help fix a problem or a situation that I didn't sit up there and create myself? Why? So, like I said, because of a lot of this, this thought process that is going on, this is why we suffer a lot in the black community. This is why we have a lot of this divisiveness and we have a lot of people being misled by other individuals without even properly checking, uh, you know, the credentials of said individual. Like I said before, and I'm just going to end it on this, right? For, you know, those women who are divestors, who you're, you know, oh so proud about dating like all these other guys and, you know, they find you interesting and, you know, all this. Kudos to you. That's great. Let me let me just clap it up for you right there. Kudos for you. That's great. Um, You know, realistically, in a sense, people don't care. It's like if you're actually genuinely happy, then you don't, in a sense, have to like parade that around to everybody else because that's your enjoyment. Nobody else is going to feel that same enjoyment right as you. So it's like you, in a sense, parading and all this other stuff is basically, in a sense, saying like, yeah, I got something, but yeah. That, that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you're actually really happy, then you're unbothered. You're doing all of your, you know, every day and, and, and all of these other good things, right? And as I stated before, um, go ahead and, and do you. Go ahead and be great. But at the end of the day, it's like it's no reason for you to come back to the black community and talk about, oh, this guy is better than you. That doesn't make any sense. That defeats the purpose of you going out there and trying to find somebody else that is going to value you better love you better, care for you better, be there for you better, right? That just cuts off that whole thing because it just makes it seem as though like you just did this just to try to get back at those individuals that caused you a certain type of hurt that you feel at that, you know, at, at this initial time that you never really 100% got over. And this is like I said before, if a lot of people actually work on themselves before they get into relationships, they will find out a lot more about themselves. And a lot of the actions that they perform and take, they wouldn't necessarily do or they would actually just stop them. But like I said, when it comes to the black community, this is not something realistically the black community is ready for. We're real good at talking. We are uh, real good at complaining. We're real good at pointing fingers, but when it actually comes time to trying to do the work, to trying to, you know, just better ourselves, talking about man bettering man, woman bettering a woman, and then coming together and to better ourselves, we're not really ready to do that work. It's just all talk. So while everybody else, these other ethnicities of people are actually doing it, black people are just talking. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that I listed in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.